It's the most extraordinary feat of engineering in history. And one of the most iconic man-made structures on the planet. The Great Wall of China. It's the ultimate wonder of the world. This took more time, more people, more material than any other building. But why did the Chinese go to such staggering lengths to build it? This wall is the result of blood, sweat and fears. And what are the secrets that have enabled it to survive for over 2,000 years? Now, groundbreaking science is rewriting its complex history, decoding its mysteries, to reveal there's much more to the Great Wall than just bricks and mortar. It's simple and yet sophisticated. It's a wonderful design. It's defied mountain ranges. Time. And all out war. Today, cutting edge chemistry discovers that the secret to its remarkable strength is a simple ingredient that can be found in every kitchen. And a new survey determines its length is truly extraordinary. As we finally solve the enigma at the heart of the world's greatest megastructure. Many centuries ago, in the days before the Great Wall, Bands of horsemen began to gather in the lands to the north of China. They united to become a deadly cavalry force and would battle with China for millennia in a bloody conflict. The raiders were fast hitting, skillful warriors who left devastation in their wake. The Chinese responded with a series of defenses that would eventually grow to become the greatest structure ever created. They stretched from the ocean, using sun-baked mud to master the most arid deserts stone to forge rivers, and bricks to conquer mountains. The wall is a tremendous piece of hardware because unlike the pyramids or the Colosseum or the Taj Mahal, this is not just history, it's part of the world's geography, it's so immense. The Great Wall is a must-see site for millions of visitors every year. A globally recognized symbol of China's strength and independence. And a place where everyone who's anyone just has to be seen. This wall I am sitting on here is the only individual building that appears on world maps and globes. This has a scale of its own. Few people know the wall as well as William Lindsay. In 1987, he walked its entire length, the first Westerner to do so for decades. Those were the days when you were in central Beijing and hundreds of people would gather around you because most of them had never seen a live foreigner before. They were astounded at my height, you know, six foot three. I must have just looked like a man from Mars. For me, it translated initially into a journey of 78 days, when China was tentatively opening its doors to the outside world. In China, the wall is known as Wang Li Changchung. Literally, that's the 10,000 Li Wall. That's about 5,000 kilometers. Wan Li Changcheng is the Chinese term for this. Uh, it doesn't translate as Great Wall of China. It is more meaningful. If you really want to be on the mark, what we're standing on in Chinese is the Endless Wall. 
The Great Wall is so vast, nobody has ever managed to measure its true length. Until now. 大家都是停留在各自的理解上，嗯，有的人认为长城只有两千多公里，最多的有的人认为长城有五万多公里。Now the Chinese have set out to solve the mystery, once and for all. One hundred and fifty kilometers northeast of Beijing, at Jinshanling. Technicians prepare to use helicopter drones, carrying sophisticated pods. They can map every detail with great clarity. Very advanced technology. Then this this one this one whole thing is our company's aerospace simulation. Usually, there are three types of simulation. We are completely using a direction map. This control panel, which has a map with GPS points, allows him to. Pinpoint the locations and direct the helicopter to those locations. The pod has five cameras, so as it's flying, it will precisely calculate the height of the wall, the height of the towers, the the relief of the surrounding terrains. Basically, it's producing a 3D view of the wall. Oh, is it is automated? Yes. Yes. Basically, uh, a survey lasts for about 40 minutes, and within that survey, you're looking at about four kilometers of wall. And I guess you'll be quite occupied in the next few years. This is a long wall. This pioneering technology is helping to revolutionize our understanding of the wall. And provide invaluable information for conservation work. This research is just a pilot stage of a much larger operation. Back in 2006, China's official Cultural Heritage Academy started a definitive nationwide survey. deploying a battery of high technology, including aerial photography, satellite images, and laser scanning. Thousands of kilometers into the western deserts, teams spread out over a vast area. This is the first time cartographers have gone out with archaeologists looking for every trace of the wall. In 2010, archaeologists came to Jinta County and found previously undiscovered sections of the wall. Over 2,000 years old. They've survived, even though they're built of little more than sun-baked mud. The discovery of these ancient mud walls, along with the more famous brick ones, give a clue to the survey's first big revelation. There's not just one wall, but many. It should be the Great Walls of China. And there are at least 16. The survey shows it took over 2,400 years for the 16 walls to evolve. Built by successive emperors and dynasties in response to changing threats. Using different materials and with a great variety of striking features. The earliest walls were scattered and short. 
while others sat far to the north and were then abandoned. Long sections of the walls overlapped or adapted to the terrain. And not only did they discover new walls, but also undocumented structures. Nearly 44,000, including forts and towers. The western end is deep in the Gobi Desert. It spans China and climbs the mountains north of Beijing before plunging into the ocean at the Dragon's Head and extends as far east as the North Korean border. But the biggest shock came when all the survey data was finally put together. Twenty-one thousand kilometers is three times longer than traditionally believed. It's further than the distance from the North Pole to the South Pole. This wall is so long that when it was being operated 400 years ago, guards in towers at the east end of the wall would witness the sunrise one hour and 20 minutes before guards at the western end of the same wall would witness the same event. The next challenge is to discover the forces that first drove the wall's creation and break the codes of its secret communication system. Visitors to China are familiar with the famous brick wall. It's one of the world's most iconic structures. But it started as sun-baked mud and foliage. Terrifying forces drove its creation and explain why and how the Great Wall was first built. We have to go back over 2,200 years and deep into the wilderness to find parts of the longest wall built to defend ancient China. Only fragments remain. This was once one of the most disputed parts of Asia. The battleground for fearsome raiders, known as the deadly Xiongnu. The Xiongnu were famed as horse archers. A brutal raiding force of hard-riding men who struck terror into the hearts of the enemy. The Xiongnu left a trail of destruction in their wake. To pursue or engage them often led to disaster. Horse archers were the ideal troops for harassing attacks. They could come as if from nowhere, appearing suddenly. It was true terror tactics. The Xiongnu were only few in number. But with their superb mastery of the horse and deadly composite bow, they revolutionized warfare and forced the great Chinese empire to adopt a radical new strategy. They decided to build a wall, a complex, linear fortress. Nomads from the north posed a realistic military threat. Every emperor soon learned that the length of his job would depend on managing the frontier well. But over two millennia ago, how did they make a wall in a desert? This is a replica of the rammed earth wall. It's at once wonderfully simple and yet wonderfully sophisticated. Look at this frame, for instance, this triangular frame. This does two things. 
A, the top of the frame allows you perfect alignment to get that wall running exactly where you want it across the landscape. But it also gives standardization to the shape of the wall. I also use these reeds, so bundles of reeds that were layered in between the rammed earth. Pounding in the reeds binds the earth together, making a tough, solid wall. It's simple and yet sophisticated. It's a wonderful design. And this reconstructed section is only a third of the size of the original walls. They changed the landscape, standing six meters tall. These defences focused on blocking strategic weak points, vulnerable passes and valleys. These sections of fortifications spanned ancient China, stretching for 10,000 kilometres. But this wasn't just a simple barrier. It was an entire protection and communications network, expertly designed to resist attack. One of the many defense systems is this perimeter forest of porcupine spikes. Look how unpleasant they are. You'd have to send very brave men in. Attacking troops would have to clear the spikes in order to climb and breach the wall. But while they're being cleared, men up there are shooting down at you. When they weren't defending the wall itself, the troops would live in garrison forts like this. Now ruins. They once housed a thousand Chinese cavalry, ready to battle the Xiongnu. But today, many scholars challenge the traditional Chinese view that the wall was purely for defense. Until recently, we knew almost nothing of the lives of the men who policed this frontier. Then, over the past century, Archaeologists started to make some stunning discoveries. Tiny wooden strips engraved with text. The Juyan slips. The ancient Chinese used wood and bamboo as paper. We These unique fragments allow us to read minds from 2,000 years ago. Let us home. I am patrolling the wall, and life at the border is hard. Please write often to me. Medical cures. To treat a cold, mix wild ginger with cinnamon and monkshood. But the slips don't just tell us about the personal life of those on the frontier. They also decode one of the war's best kept secrets. The operation of a complex signaling system. These stumps in the desert used to be beacon towers. They ran deep into Xiongnu territory and were used to send coded signals back to the troops on the Great Wall. They extended at 90 degrees to the wall. They came out from the wall and they extended for perhaps 400 kilometers. That's something like the distance between London and Newcastle, a tremendous distance out into the desert. They would send signals back to the garrison telling them the Xiongnu are on the move, there's this many. And their signaling devices were quite ingenious. They had this feng, this lantern-shaped object which they could run up the pole. They had biao, 
flags, which in various combinations of numbers they could run up the pole. But is it possible to work out exactly how the signals were used here 2,000 years ago? So there's the original beacon tower, and we've set our beacon signal along the horizon to the left of that. Now, something's happening. I can see movement. It's a film. It, they're putting up one of those lantern-shaped symbols. If you see 50 Xiongnu, raise a phone. Something's happening again, and I can see that this is going to be the flags, the Bowie. If you see 200 Xiongnu, raise three flags. The signal summoned help from the forts to stop attacks. And they got larger as the threat escalated. The towers all had a massive bonfire ready to light. And reeds start to go quite quickly. If you see 1,000 Xiongnu, light the bonfire. The warning of a thousand attackers would quickly be passed along the towers to the forts. But it left the men on the beacon towers alone to face the advancing Xiongnu. Listening to the roar and crackle of this fire behind me, I could just imagine the dread that must have gone through the four or five men in a beacon tower when they had to light one of these. But the signaling system worked. The Chinese defense system kept the Xiongnu at bay, evolving and adapting over time. But a thousand years later, in the early 1200s, the raiders reappeared. Only now there were many more. And they were united under a great warlord, Genghis Khan and the Mongols. In 1209, they attacked on several fronts, going around the Great Wall and bursting through it. They conquered all China, setting up their own ruling dynasty. The Chinese suffered the yoke of Mongol rule under Genghis Khan and his successors for more than a century. And it was a brutal war. Defeat at the hands of the Mongols left deep scars. But after decades of subjugation, in 1368, the Chinese Ming Dynasty overthrew the Mongols and established one of the richest dynasties in China's history. The Ming emperors were determined that China would never again be conquered. They vowed to turn it into an impregnable fortress. They demanded the ultimate war built 